from politics. We're going to go on to that feature we've been telling you about from the top of the show. Now, most parts of Nairobi City are experiencing poor quality of air, given the increased number of motor vehicles on the road and the construction of skyscrapers across the city. But imagine living in an area where the level of air pollution can go as high as more than 15 times the acceptable levels. That's a life of residents of Korogosho, Dandora, Kariobangi, and Mukuru slums. That's right. Now, in our special report, The Choking City, our very own Enoch Sokolia looks at the increasing health concerns in Nairobi City posed by poor management of waste products and industrial emissions. Take a look. Wanga inatoka mingi kwanzia masaya sa kumi asubui. Yeni kifika sa kumi na mbili asubui wanazima. The predisposing factors are there. It is a danger, and it is actually more so more dangerous for children whose lungs, you know, and vital organs are still developing. There are three things you see when you arrive inside Dandora dump site. The first one are heaps of garbage. This is Kenya's largest dump site and almost every single garbage from Nairobi city ends up here. The second is smoke pollution. The third are dump site workers, a group of Kenyans who come here every single day to earn a living. <laughs> Ikwe <laughs> Every single day, hundreds of trucks arrive with garbage from the city's affluent district and its hotels and restaurants. Every day, hundreds of people from the nearby slums come here to scavenge. They look for food, plastics, scrap metals, and anything else that may be of use to them. James Okutoi is one of them. He says that the death of his mother and mistreatment from the woman his father brought in as his stepmother drove him out of their home and into the dump site. At the dump site, there is enough work for everyone, waste collectors as well as those whose job is to provide anything the trash workers might need. Even those as young as Isaac Chiteri, Chiteri is a class one people and still has a long way to achieve his academic dreams. Yes. So, he says he gives his mother a hand so that she can fetch him school fees. It is approximated that between 3,000 and 5,000 trash collectors come here every day. 
but experts have warned that the dam site presents danger to those who work here and those in the nearby slums. They simply say the dam site first feeds them, then it kills them. This is one of the most polluted areas with toxins and toxic metals in the country. Every single breath I'm taking in is full of smoke. This air here is disgustingly dirty. <coughs> Ukiangalia kama ile kadi unanunua ya Safaricom, ukiscratch unaambia yako hiyo carbon siju whatever iko hapo juu si mzuri na hapo ingia kwako inaweza kupatia nini? Kansa. Na tukiangalia mingi pengine zinatupo hapa. Unaona sasa kama jana jioni kumlinyesha mvua. Hiyo mvua imenyesha imetuposhea kamo, kamoshi kidogo. Sasa tunaombaga Mungu mvua inyeshe ndio moshi ifanye nini? Moshi huwezi kukugonjesha tu hivyo sababu huwezi kwenda kwa moshi kufanya kazi. Unafanya tu hivi kwa mlima kwa mlima kwa mlima kwa mlima kwa mlima. But we have discovered that air pollution isn't just about the smoke being released into the air. What is contained in the smoke can define how dangerous to human health and the environment the emissions could be. For example, burning of plastics. It increases the risk of heart diseases, aggravates respiratory ailments such as asthma and emphysema, and causes nausea, rashes or headaches, damages in the nervous system, kidney or liver, and in the reproductive and development system. The issue of open burning is worse than living waste, you know, in mountains. Because when you burn waste, especially waste that is mixed, it has plastics. It has sometimes medical waste because we don't know how this is managed. It's not necessarily managed the way it should be. Then we are saying we are releasing, you know, emissions that are not even acceptable. You know, our bodies can't take them. The city's solid waste that arrives at Dandora dump site contains about 12% of plastics, which eventually get burned. Releasing toxic gases like dioxins, furans, mercury, and polychlorinated biphenyls into the atmosphere. If inhaled, dioxins instantly causes coughing, shortness of breath, and dizziness. They are the most toxic to the human organs. They are carcinogenic and hormone disruptors, persistent and accumulate in the bodies and can be given by mothers to their unborn children through the placenta. Air containing hazardous emissions from the dump site ends up in the nearby low-income informal settlements of Korosho, Dandora, Kariobangi and Lakisama. So when you burn plastics, you're actually releasing carcinogens into the air. We may not have the study about you know, how many people have cancer and so on from that uh, situation, but since this is not, not, doesn't come in overnight, so you cannot necessarily say I got sick and I got cancer from this. But the environment itself is actually, you know, carcinogenic. Everybody nowadays, they are saying maybe suffering from one cancer, one type of cancer or another. So it's true. This is an environmental uh, diseases that are coming up because of pollution. Be it air front or water pollution, air pollution, and land contamination. With the help of technologies from Code of Africa, we are seeking to establish just how poor waste management and industrial emissions are threatening and endangering the lives of many city dwellers. We begin here. Korohosho slums, a densely populated informal settlement that borders Dandora dump site. We are using a digital sensor machine that establishes the levels of particulate matter in the air. So with regards to WHO guidelines, we expect particulate matter 10 to be at least 50 micrograms per cubic meter. 50. In a 50 10. micrograms yeah. 10 in a 24-hour period. Mm -hmm. And PM 2.5 to be 25 micrograms per cubic meter in a 24-hour period. So what we see here is instantaneous data we are sampling at 30 seconds intervals. We want to test just how safe or dangerous is the air that circulates in Korohosho. And if the air polluted with toxins from the dump site blows all the way into the slum. We are looking at this, you said 183.6 uh, milligrams per cubic meter. Now that's high level, uh, let's say, 
of pollution, but we are looking at this environment. What could be causing this uh, kind of pollution here? Okay, so in this particular situation, once you just look here behind us, you can see that there is some wood burning. Oh, that one. That one right uh -huh. there. You can see that there is charcoal as well. Mm -hmm. So if you look at most of the environments, you'll find that this is actually a very um, usual scenario where you have outside cooking that is using fuel, that is using charcoal and wood, for example, and a little bit of soda. So that contributes very, very highly. So we still have to check, yeah. move away a little bit and see if it's only this one or the dump site could also be contributing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because you have situations where you have a dump site like that and you have, just like you can see here, you have wind patterns and you have wind that is actually blowing a lot of the smoke our way. So we definitely have to go around checking because we are sampling at a very high rate. Okay, let's see. We can walk now. Abarzeno? <laughs> We meet with Abdi Ibrahim, who tells us how the dump site has become a menace to people living in Korosho. Mm. So this is actually causing Chege establishes that the level of pollution is twice the required standard of 25 milligrams per cubic meter. The digital sensor reading was 53.0 milligrams per cubic meter. But the next reading will be worrying. So PM10 here is at 361.8 micrograms per cubic meter. This is too much. This is very, very high. This is extremely high. And PM2.5 at 207.5 micrograms per cubic meter. This is extremely high. Now let's do some uh, quick math. Mm -hmm. uh, the level of pollution, that is PM2.5, mm -hmm. 207.5. Uh, both required is 25 micrograms 25, per cubic meter. So we divide by 25. Eight. 0.3 times the required. Yeah, that is quite high. Quite high. Mm. Let's look at it. Someone lives there. Yeah. Are there dangers? No, absolutely. There are very high dangers there. Dangers of respiratory diseases especially. If you're exposed to these kind of levels on a daily basis over long periods of time, then definitely will have issues with respiratory diseases. And looking at it in the long term, you develop lung cancer, cardiovascular diseases, things that you did not even know you could get from this sort of pollution. Everyone breathing in at this concentration is like smoking 15 to 20 cigarettes a day. Vincent is a clinician at Tumaini Medical Center in Korosho Slums. He has been working here for three years now. We find him attending to this young girl. He suspects that she might have contracted pneumonia, a bacterial infection associated with air pollution. He tells us how it is like living in one of Kenya's most polluted environment. When we are talking about children, most of them get uh, pneumonia as a result of the, the smoke that come from the dump site. Out of 10 children that have respiratory uh, disc diseases, five of them come, are coming from the, from the dump site. Though there are, there, are, there are those who are affected by the smell, especially those who are asthmatic. And those are the kind of patients that we receive at Tumaini here. Yeah. yeah, most of the time. People here have no protection against the toxic field smoke from the landfills of Dandora. Even though not directly linked to the dump site, we establish that there are many cases of stomach and lung cancer in Korosho. We, we get a child eh, of, uh, of uh, one man who, who has had recurrent coughs for the past one month. So it means since, since the child was born, yes, she, she or she has been having that cough. We 
try giving treatment, sometimes to try to give treatment. After a week or two, they are back. After a week or two, they are back. So when you're ready, it, it's exposing the children to get into developing the development uh, problems later in life. Every day we are saying we need additional investment in health. Probably we do need to have investments upstream in keeping the air clean. So instead of medicine for me to treat my child of asthma, keep the air clean, then I don't need actually that medication. It is a prayer young souls growing up in Mukuru Kwaruben will embrace wholeheartedly. An informal settlement whose growth remains unchecked and full of filthy air. Here, companies compete in releasing toxic emissions to the environment, not minding the health implication to those who live close by and the ecosystem. Most of them doing so in the evenings and at night. During most of the hours we stayed in Mukuru Kwaruben, chimneys from this factory belonging to Bachu Industries Limited looked dry. But when the sun settled in the west, it was a pandemonium. Hey, you're the mingi, my friend. Both the chimneys and iron sheet roof competed to release smoke. At intervals, white and black smoke will be released. We find residents seated outside a plain area. Their houses are not accommodative at this time due to pollution. They say it's hard to breathe well indoors. One can only punt. You can easily smell all the sulfur dioxide. This area of Mukuru slums is like a basin. The polluted air doesn't disperse. It simply flows into the nearby shanties. If iron sheets themselves are reacting to emissions, that can tell you how our bodies are also reacting. Probably ours is slower and because it cannot be visibly seen, we assume that we are actually getting by. But if the emissions are actually impacting or affecting the Mabati, then it means they are also impacting on us. The only unfortunate thing is that you don't realize this overnight, therefore you can stay with this condition for a long time, and you may not actually know that this condition has come from the environment where you've stayed. The digital center gadget confirms just that. The level of pollution is simply quite high. The PM 2.5 level is 401.9 milligrams per cubic meter, 16 times higher the required standard of 25 milligrams per cubic meter or less. These are very hazardous values. Um, they are over 10 times the recommended limits. With every emission from this factory, the level of air pollution here increases that is according to this gadget when we were growing up we were taught that air has no smell but i think there are children in this city and other areas who think air has a smell because of where they live and the conditions they live in you know we are talking about these are chemicals you know when they meet in the atmosphere there is reactions there is what we call photochemical reactions that takes place the products of those gases are the ones which are causing all some of these problems we meet milcent a clinician at Ruben Health Center attending to a patient. The patient is suffering from tuberculosis, a respiratory infection associated with air pollution. She says cases of pollution-related respiratory diseases, especially asthma, are on the rise in Mukuru Kwaruben. We have such a big number of patients with asthma, for example, that we had to set out a specific day in a week for a clinic, especially the asthma clinic. On a weekly basis, we see an average of around 18, 20 patients. That is every Thursday we have our asthma clinic. Children and the elderly are the most vulnerable. In Mukuru Kwaruben, elderly people have really bad lungs and over time they develop heart failures. And you see if a child starts uh, having this problem when they are way too young, eh? They grow with it. We lose about 19,000 people every year 
are from respiratory infections. We even say that the easiest way to get to the morgue in Nairobi is just from air pollution. It's not even other issues that we would want to imagine. Pollution doesn't just cause respiratory ailments. Medical studies have shown that babies born in polluted environments have higher risk of developing malformations. Most factories in industrial area release emissions at night. Dangerous times for asthmatic patients. A good number have lost their lives during this time. In the morning when we come, we are told there's a patient who had an attack, probably an asthmatic attack, and the uh, patient died. Jenwa Shu, not her real name, is lucky to have survived such an attack. She works in one of the factories in industrial area. She says her problem started a year ago after having moved from the factory she used to work in to another factory in search of a better pee. She but the National Environmental Management Authority, NEMA, appears to have turned on a blind eye. Even as factory owners continue to literally dance on the grave of those who succumb to pollution. The authority has continuously approved the construction of factories and settlement areas and in some cases allowed slum dwellers to continue expanding their areas of occupation closer to the factories. Worst of it is that NEMA has enforcement agencies attached in these informal settlements, but rather than fulfill their mandate, they end up turning these factories into cash cow, getting rich at the expense of people's lives. We have uh, some regulations on air pollution, which we actually do not use. They are not enforced. The same applies to NEMA and the county government of Nairobi when it comes to Dandora Dam site. Over the last four decades, proposals have been made and old ones reviewed over how to properly manage Nairobi's garbage. We have established that plans to generate waste energy from the city's garbage have successfully been drawn but are dusting away at the city hall's shelves. Now the question is, will those with the mandate of ensuring that the city is a safe home for all its residents take charge or will some of Nairobi's poorest neighborhoods continue to be exposed to these choking fumes? Anoxicolia, Citizen TV, Nairobi.